Okay, well, hello everyone and welcome to the International Admissions UC presentation. My name is Nick Paddock and I, along with Jess Zilstra, are happy that you're here. For the next 30 minutes, we will take turns speaking about academic programs, experience-based learning, co-op, living on campus, and living in Cincinnati, USA, the application, tuition, and scholarships. So we have a lot to talk about. Uh, at the end of the presentation, Jess and I will answer all of your questions. So if, if on your app, if you can go ahead and take a, a look for the chat feature, this is where you're going to type your questions in. At the end of the presentation, Jess and I will both read through all of your questions and do our best to provide an answer. So let's go ahead and jump in. Sure, I'll just oh, quickly introduce myself I'm as sorry, well. Jess. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, hi everyone, my name is Jess Silstra, as Nick said. I am originally from Sydney, Australia, and I'm currently a junior, so I'm in my third year here at the University of Cincinnati. I am studying musical theatre, so I'm in the College Conservatory of Music here, and I also have a minor in business administration in the Lydna College of Business. So I'm super excited to share all about the University of Cincinnati today. Sure, so here's just an outline of our enrollment numbers and things. So here at the University of Cincinnati, we have a total of 46,400 students, and that includes 3,400 international students. We have a really great international community here at the University of Cincinnati, and we've listed here some of our top countries, so China, India, Vietnam, Oman, Saudi Arabia, um, Mexico, South Korea, Canada, Germany, Japan, United Kingdom, Taiwan, Egypt, and Nepal. And at the university, there's many different academic programs to choose from and lots of support and opportunities. So we have over 350 academic bachelor programs to choose from. Many are top ranked in the US and top ranked internationally. Uh, of those classes, they're all housed in 13 colleges that make up the University of Cincinnati, and that includes two regional campuses where students can begin their education at a two-year degree and then transition over to main campus to finish out their third and fourth year. Um, our class sizes are small. Students love UC because it is a, a large uh, American university feel, but you do know everybody and the faculty will know who you are. So there is a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio in our classrooms. Um, many students have uh, knowledge about what they want to study. They want to be in engineering, design, uh, theater, business. Some students aren't quite sure, right? So they can choose exploratory studies. This is an undecided start, essentially. So you can come to the university, start your first year undecided, and then choose the degree program you'd like to be in your second year. Uh, a lot of support uh, is given by the university, uh, the Learning Resources Office, is a, there's a robust and busy place on campus where students go for all academic support starting from their first day until they graduate. So know that when you come to UC, the, the course rigor is challenging. Um, it is a great university, so and there is a lot of academic support from other students, peer mentors, and from faculty and staff that work at the Learning Resource Center. And if you love academics, and many of our students do, you can join the University Honors Program. Uh, many students begin their first year, and some begin their second year. This is a separate program on top of your academic program where you can receive additional opportunities and additional um, uh, grant money for research and other projects that you are going to work on. So there's a lot of great things to get involved in on campus. One of our signature programs at UC is called the Accelerated College English Program or ACE, as we call it. ACE is a one-year program. It's for the first year only, and it's for students who want additional English support, additional English education help. So students can test into UC, begin in the ACE program, and take half their courses in uh, ESL courses, and then their other half of their classes will be towards their major. So for example, a student could be majoring in engineering, and they'd like a little additional education in English. They could choose to start in the ACE program and then transition their second year into the program full-time, engineering program full-time, and not be totally behind. Um, that's the same for the Lindner College of Business. A student who wants some major marketing, who needs that little English, extra English help, can start there and then finish out their first year successfully, transition over to their major marketing full-time, their second year, and finish on time in four years. There's no additional tuition, there's no additional fees, 
and it's been a very successful program for many students at UC. So now we're going to move on to experience based learning. This is one of the best things here at the University of Cincinnati. Basically experience-based learning is when you're able to put your classroom work into real world experience. Uh, for me, it's been the time when I've really grown the most in my education, in my educational journey here at UC and outside of the classroom. Uh, so I've listed a couple of things here. We've got co-ops and internships, clinicals, student teaching, artistic performances, research, service learning, capstones, and study abroad. Uh, it depends what you're studying, um, on what kind of experience-based learning you're gonna do. Uh, as a musical theater major, I do artistic performances. Um, so I'll get you to move on to the next slide, Nick, please. Um, I've put in some pictures here of some experiences I've done while I've been here at UC. So I'll quickly run through it. There's three types of artistic performances that they offer here at UC in my program. And there's rehearsal and performance, which we do for college credit. So each year the musical theater department puts on four main stage um, full productions here at CCM. Uh, we work with all of the other departments. So the costume department, the set design department, lighting, media, and all of our students put on a fully stage production. It really does feel like a Broadway and like a professional musical. Um, in my freshman year, I was a part of 42nd Street. And then I was in rehearsals for Bright Star. And this upcoming year, I'll be part of two shows, one in the fall and one in my spring semester. Um, the second type that we do is independent studies. So independent studies is where the students kind of take the lead. Um, we, we take on the role of director, producer, we can also perform in the shows. And this for me has been a great experience because I can take on other more leadership roles within my performance degree. Um, and then the last type that we do is incubator projects. And this is where we bring in industry professionals um, to Cincinnati or we work with them online virtually and they put on productions using our students. And this is a great way to make industry connections and just learn from the best of the best. So uh, experience-based learning here at UC has been the time when I really have grown the most and I've made the best memories as well while I've been doing it. Thank you, Jess. You're doing great things. So we did mention cooperative education and that is something we need to talk more about. Uh, cooperative education, which we call co-op for short, started at the University of Cincinnati in uh, 1916 and it is, or I'm sorry, 1906. And it is a great program that allows students to apply what they learn in the classroom out at a job in the real world. Uh, this allows students to, um, you know, get paid for their work, uh, work for full semesters, typically up to five full semesters um, and receive real feedback um, and actually get to test what they learn and see if they love the career that they're going to move into. We are ranked top five in the United States for our co-op program. So co-op is a mandatory uh, academic program, or I'm sorry, uh, experience-based program for engineering students, design, architecture, art, and planning students, and information technology students. It is optional for business and arts and sciences students. As well, any student at UC can be a part of the Co-op 2.0 program. So anyone can partake in Co-op. Um, it is a great program where, again, you can work a full semester. You will not pay tuition on that full semester. And you earn about $10,000 pay. And that's your money. It doesn't go to your parents or to the University of Cincinnati. It goes into your bank account for you to use towards your tuition or towards anything you would like. We have partnerships with over 1,500 companies worldwide. So our students don't have to do the work to find the company, right? So we have uh, many offices on campus that will coordinate those co-op jobs with our students. So you can see a, a short list here of some of the popular companies. Um, we have Macy's, BMW, Delta Airlines, Procter & Gamble, Tesla. This past summer, one of our student ambassadors went to California to work for the full semester at Tesla to help design cars. And so she's back on campus now and she's you know, excited to start up uh, her, sec her next co-op. So you might be wondering, how does this work, right? How do I come to UC? 
when do I actually get to work for these companies? So you'll see here on the left, there's an example of a business student schedule. Uh, the first year, the business student would be on campus the full time, right? Fall and spring semester, and they'd have summer semester off to return home or travel around the United States or the world. That second year, the student would return back to campus for classes in the fall semester. They would be preparing for their first co-op job, you'll see in red, for spring semester co-op one. Since it's optional for business students, the student can do one, two, three, four, or five co-ops. It's really up to them. You can see this student chose to do three co-ops all in spring semester and then attend classes in the summer semester so that they could finish on time in four years. Where you see a red uh, marker, there's no additional cost for tuition. So the student is earning, uh, in this example, $30,000 while they're a uh, college student. On the right, you'll see the College of Engineering student schedule. This is a bit longer because engineering students are required to do five co-op rotations. And they'll start that second year, as you can see on spring semester, and they'll rotate between school and working full-time for a company until their fifth year when they're back in school for fall and spring semester. Again, they're not paying any more tuition. So it's five years of school for four years of tuition. And they are earning about $50,000 and building that resume, right? And building a career. So when they finish at UC and graduate and uh, hug all their friends goodbye, they'll move on to their, to their job here in Ohio, anywhere in the US or abroad. So I'm gonna talk a little bit now about college and campus life here at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, so we have four dining halls on campus and they are awesome. You really can find any food that you would like. They, um, they attend to all different dietary requirements. One thing that I love a lot about our dining halls is that they'll, they kind of put on events and they'll do special days. So I always, in my freshman year, especially loved like, taco Tuesdays or like tender Thursdays, they'll have special days where they kind of make a big deal out of a meal or a type of food or whatever. Um, and you really can find whatever you like within the residence halls as well. There's lots of different coffee shops. I love Starbucks. I'm always at Starbucks and there's lots of Starbucks all over campus as well. Um, in turn, I'm just gonna skip quickly over to our residence halls. We have 16 residence halls. Um, about 83% of first year students live on campus. I lived on campus my first year and I loved it. It was a great way to just immerse myself in the University of Cincinnati culture and life. And I got to know all about the campus and just meet lots of students. And there's three types of uh, living styles in your freshman year on campus living. So there's traditional style, which really is you'll have a roommate and you'll live You'll have a bed and you'll have a desk and a wardrobe and then you'll have a communal shared bathroom. That's what I lived in my freshman year. And then the second type is suite style. So this typically you'll share a bathroom with less people um, and you might have a little bit more space. Um, and then apartment style will be like an apartment. You'll have a kitchen, maybe your own bathroom or you'll share a bathroom. So it kind of just moves up as we go with sharing with less people. Um, and really with that, it depends on what you'd like, what living style you prefer and how many roommates you'd like. Um, and we have 16 residence halls, as I said, all of them are within 10 minute walking distance of all of your classes. I loved getting up in the morning and walking to campus, walking around campus to class. In my freshman year, I lived in a dorm called Siddal Hall. Um, I live there because it's really close to the music school here. So I really would actually just walk across the road to my classes, especially if I had an early 8 a.m. class. That was always the best. Uh, and then here we've got the number one rec center. It really is incredible. I remember walking into the rec center my first day on campus. Uh, the gym is huge and there's lots and lots of different equipment. Uh, there's basketball courts, there's a rock climbing wall, there's a swimming pool that even has a lazy river. I show off to all my friends back home about that. So the rec center is awesome and it, um, they also run fitness classes and lots of things. So everyone has a chance to do what they like and get active and be on campus. So the rec center is great. A little bit about Cincinnati as a city. So what's great about coming to the University of Cincinnati is you're here in this suburb of Clifton Heights, but you're five minutes from downtown. Um, you can get anywhere in the city of Cincinnati and immerse yourself in the city as well as being on campus. 
I love going downtown on my weekends um, and kind of exploring the city. There's lots of art museums, um, music concerts, great restaurants, shopping. Um, and a lot of University of Cincinnati students actually end up living here after they graduate. They fall in love with the city and everything about it. And they end up staying here and finding jobs here. So it's the number one city for college graduates. And it's the number two mid-sized college city in the country. And it's also number 12 overall. And we're also really close to lots of other cities, which I like too. So you can drive and travel in Kentucky. So it, it really feels like a nice urban campus as well as being that typical college experience. You make a great point. We are located in a great location in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the opportunities within the university, the, there are, I'm sorry, outside the university, there are many co-op internship and career opportunities in Cincinnati. Uh, there are over 400 Fortune 500 companies located in Cincinnati. Many are headquartered here. So we have eight of these Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Cincinnati, which is a great opportunity for our students to work as a co-op student or intern. And then, you know, after you graduate to stay and have a career. So you can see we are a top, top 25 city in the U.S. for young people and top five for one of the most affordable cities in the United States as well. So it is a great place to live. I think Jess spoke really well about the campus and the city culture. And um, I'm a little bit older and I, I really do love the Cincinnati area. And there is quite a bit to do for myself and everyone else. So let's jump into some of the more important stuff here, the application process. I know all of you are hopefully working on this. Um, you do have to apply online through the common application. Um, that link is on our website. You can see here admissions.uc.edu forward slash apply. On the application, we're looking for uh, your test scores, a list of activities that you're involved in, your personal essay, your personal statement about why you want to study the degree you've chosen, and a letter of recommendation. Uh, we do a holistic application review. So we are looking at the whole student to decide whether to admit you to your first choice, second choice, or third choice program that you've applied for. For first year students, um, you can see a short list here of documents that we'll need in order to complete your application. So official high school transcripts or official secondary transcripts are extremely important. We will need your current year transcripts, what classes you're currently enrolled in. And then we'll also need the three previous years of your education. We'd like to see the classes you took and the grades you earned, right? Um, and that must come from a staff member in your school. So your guidance counselor, another teacher, an administrator will send us that transcript. It cannot come from you, the student, or your parents or aunts or uncles. So it's important that it is an official document sent from your school to our office. A letter of recommendation is important as well. This can be from a teacher, uh, an employer, or anyone else that's not related to you. And this is someone who would simply just brag about you and talk about how great you are. Um, and they would send that e over to us as well. So that letter of recommendation needs to come from the person that wrote it. They would send it by email to our office. We will need proof of English and proof of math. Now there are some rules around this. So if we jump down to the English requirements, um, everyone's required to show us that they have English ability unless you have taken advanced level classes such as AP or IB, or you're from certain designated countries. And on our website, we have a list of those exemptions, right? So if you're from a certain country that speaks English as your first language, you do not have to submit an English test. And again, that list is on our website. For the math requirement, this is required for all students who want to be reviewed for scholarships. So it is essential that you provide us a math test. And that could be through the SAT, ACT, or if you didn't take either of those, you can uh, take the UC math placement test for free. Uh, the link is on our website as well. It is a test that takes, you know, approximately 50 minutes. Um, it is challenging and it is something we will take a look at in order to determine, uh, you know, if you're going to be receiving a scholarship. Um, it, math is required for many of our colleges on campus, but not all of them. So the Lindner College of Business, the College of Engineering and Applied Science, the College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning, 
and one more, the College of Allied Health Sciences, all require a math test. So when you apply to UC and you go into your application portal, you'll see that some of you, if you applied to engineering, business, design, architecture, or allied health, you'll see a requirement, right? A math requirement. If you're applying to the College of Arts and Sciences or IT, you will not see a math requirement in your UC application portal. So, but I do wanna make it clear again, that it is required for any scholarship that you submit a math test, okay? Um, if you have questions on how to send these documents, please go to our website. There is a listing of how to send each document to our office. If you're a transfer student, uh, there's a, many more details. Um, if you go to our website, there's lots of information there. It can be a bit more complicated. Um, essentially, if you've taken more than 24 credit hours, you will not have to submit your high school transcripts. You will only need your college transcripts. The catch is you have to have those um, evaluated by a third party company. So again, please go to our website for more details on the transfer application. And for the ACE program, which I spoke about earlier, uh, we will need a, your high school transcripts, an official copy sent by someone from your school. So that's a guidance counselor, a teacher, or an administrator that would send it directly to our office. We will need you to show math ability. And that again can be through the ACT, SAT test, or that UC math placement test for free. And then we'll need proof of English. And again, if you speak English as your first language, you can check our website for an, the country exemption and you won't have to submit anything. Um, uh, you know, you're exempted as well if you've taken IB classes. So uh, just please go to our website to take a look for those uh, exemptions. The, I do wanna mention the ACE program application is different than the Common App since it's a different program. So you'll see a link on our website directly to the ACE program application. And the math placement test, just to review this again, um, it is approximately 50 minutes. It is proctored by a UC staff member. Um, the tests are offered on, currently on Tuesdays only at 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And it is a test on your algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and pre-calculus skills. Uh, when you take this test, you cannot use a calculator. You must use paper and pencil. Um, so, and you do have to have Zoom in order to attend. So the program we're on now, Zoom, is what you would need in order to take this test. And the timeline here, so we're past August 1st, the application is open. December 1 is our early action deadline. It is really important that you submit everything for your application by December 1st and not later. Uh, we, we will be reviewing for scholarships at that point and for programs on all engineering, anything in design and architecture and many other programs, all require students to submit by December 1. If you wait past December 1, the programs could be full and you would not be admissible. Even if you're the best student in the world, we simply wouldn't have space, right, to give you a seat. So I encourage you to meet that December 1 deadline. If you meet that, then you have to wait, patiently wait till January 24th. That is decision day. January 24th, 2022 is when we release thousands of admission decisions to students all across the US and internationally. We also released the scholarship decision at the same time. So you'll be able to see that you were admitted to the program you want, and then also the scholarship offer you're hoping to receive. Um, and then past that, you would just simply confirm you'd like to come to UC by May 1st. Uh, so I'm gonna talk quickly about our tuition costs. So we put a breakdown here of kind of where your, your money will go in these three areas. So you're obviously your tuition money, your living costs, and then your health insurance. Uh, just keep in mind, this is all annual costs. So your tuition will typically be about $28,972. Living costs will be anywhere between 12,500 and 13,900. And like I spoke about earlier, this will depend on what um, housing style you choose, depends on how much this is going to cost as well. And then your health insurance will cost about $2,360. So you'll see the total down there is $46,290 um, for your whole year, for a year of um, fees. Um, and then just quickly about scholarships. So scholarships here at the University of Cincinnati, you can get up to $15,000 per year. 
as Nick kind of mentioned earlier, there's no extra application for scholarships. What you put in will, will be looked at for your scholarship consideration. In terms of qualifications uh, for scholarships freshmen, you'll have to earn qualifying English and math scores. And then for transfer students, you'll need to have a GPA of 3.2 or higher from a non-US university. And uh, the priority deadline, December 1, really is that magic, magic date for you. And then obviously March 1st and April 1st is after decisions are released. So uh, just quickly, um, what was I gonna say about this? Oh, um, these will be also annual per year, 15,000 per year, same as the um, tuition fees. Uh, so I've put here our socials. We have a Facebook, Instagram, and a YouTube channel for you to have a little look at. Um, and we also have a fun TikTok account. Uh, there's 10 University of Cincinnati International Ambassadors. We are ready to chat to all of our prospective students, tell you all about our experiences, answer any questions you have. So please connect with us on these social media sites. Um, and I will also put a link to our email address in, oh, it's also down, down there, the international.admissions, and I'll put it in the chat for you as well. Uh, yeah, please connect with us. We'd love to chat to you. We'd love to chat to pr prospective students. So yeah, any, um, I think we're gonna open it up to questions now. Um, if anyone wants to put them in the chat. We did have a question quickly, Nick, about, um, uh, whether master's students can do co-ops um, and how much of this relates to uh, graduate and master's students. And yeah, Nicole, that's a great uh, question. Uh, for, inter for graduate students, they will do experience-based learning. Um, it's typically more of a practicum or a part of their education as a graduate student. So they wouldn't be completing a co-op per se, right? That they would be completing professional development. So it is a bit different for an undergraduate student to a graduate. Great question. Um, and this webinar is primarily for an undergraduate student. Uh, do you yeah, have to reapply for scholarships each year or does it just carry over? You do not have to reapply for your scholarship. Uh, you simply have to meet a GPA requirement in order to hold your scholarship for the eight semesters at UC. So when you're on co-op, you're not using that scholarship. So it just, it's on pause and then is applied. Jess, uh, what is the GPA requirement for the College Conservatory of Music student? Uh, I'm on a merit-based scholarship. So mine is a 3.0. Okay. For my, my scholarship money. Yep. And so each, essentially each summer, our staff will check uh, your GPA to ensure that you are going to class, that you are being successful and completing everything on time to award you the scholarship the second or the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, do we offer financial aid as well as only scholarships? We do not offer any other aid except for the merit-based scholarships we talked about before. So that global and outreach scholarship is the only um, aid that we offer students. If you are a US citizen, uh, you can apply for federal aid, right, and receive additional uh, monies. And that would come in the form of loans or grants, but typically a loan that you'd have to pay back to the US government. Are there any other questions? I can change the view here. Mm -hmm. hey. Let's see. Yes, is the maximum scholarship 15,000 per year? Yes, that is our maximum scholarship award per year for international students. The average is around eight to 10,000. Uh, how did I find applying to CCM? Yeah, so applying, that's a great question. Applying to CCM and the music school is a little different from just the kind of other regular university programs, you'll have to do a separate um, artistic, I think they call it like an artistic application. So you'll have to audition for your program. 
So I put in my application through the Common App with all my academic requirements. And then I had to put in my application with my artistic resume. So all the other um, theater things I've done. And then I had to get approved to come to do an audition. So with musical theater, you have to go through a pre-screening process to be able to actually audition. Uh, and I was lucky to get through that. And then they are now starting to offer you can audition virtually online. So especially for international students, that's great. I actually came on campus and auditioned just because I wanted to kind of see, see the place, meet the people, um, which I was really lucky to do. Came on campus, I did my audition weekend and they kind of make it a whole, they do a really great job in CCM of you can take tours, you meet with current students and you really get a feel for the university and what your life will be like here on your audition weekend. Uh, so I had my audition weekend and then I heard back through CCM that I was admitted, but I didn't, and then I got my official notice from the university that I was admitted to the program. And what I, what really drew me to this school in the end was the way that the current students reached out to me and answered all my questions the minute that I heard that I got into the school. It was, it was so exciting and I felt like I was already part of the campus community and I hadn't even clicked the accept button on my admission notice. So yeah, that was a little bit about my application to CCM. I have to brag a little bit about Jess. So how many people do we admit per year to the I, my program to your major and your major's about, musical about theater? About twenty. So twenty people are admitted per year, and she was one of them. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's pretty crazy. It's about a two two percent acceptance rate or something. I don't even mm -hmm. know. Sometimes I wonder how I got in, but I love it. So, so you'll Very see happy. her on a. Uh, you'll be on Broadway for sure. <laughs> These are great questions. Do you all have any more about what it's like living on campus or anything else? If graduate student, yeah, let me let me get a link for you. Um, in the meantime, I'll get a link for you, Nicole. Uh, in the meantime, are there any other questions about maybe the the majors at UC? Um, more about the application and what's required. Uh, we could talk more about housing. Mm -hmm. I also can talk a little bit about like student organizations. I wanted to mention quickly um, something that I always loved so much about American universities was the the sport culture and supporting my supporting my team and school spirit. And I love the Bearcats and I love the football team. It took me it took me a while to learn how football works because we don't play it in Australia, but now I think I've mastered it and I can support the team. So that's one of my one of my favorite things. Um, about coming here to an American university. Uh, On-campus jobs available? Yes, I can chat about that. So um, international students can work up to 20 hours per week um, on, in an on-campus job. Um, and then you can work up to 40 hours, sorry, that's during the semester. So 20 hours per week during the semester and then 40 hours per week outside of the semester. So during your spring break, so during the summertime. Um, there are lots and lots of on-campus jobs. It really depends what area you're interested in. So I work in the International Admissions Office as a student ambassador. That's my on-campus job. Um, and lots of our other ambassadors also have other jobs on campus that they love. The on-campus jobs, I think, are a great way to get involved in on campus in other ways. Um, for me, it's great to get out of CCM and experience other parts of campus, meet students in other programs. Uh, so on, the on-campus jobs are great here at the University of Cincinnati, I, I will say. Anything else you want to add to that, Nick? Yeah, um, and for the jobs, they are divided into essentially. So some are work-study jobs and some are not. And essentially, it can be the same position, right? So a student could work at a front desk of one of the colleges. If it's assigned as a work-study job, it can only go to a student who is um, a U.S. citizen, essentially, because it's paid for by the U.S. government directly. If it's not a work study job, then anyone can work it. So for example, all of our student ambassadors are being paid by, by us, not the US government. So it's not a, a work study job. So making that clear now. So when you come here, you're not confused about why you, why you cannot work some of the jobs because the US government is paying for them. Uh, but it is fun and our students work all over campus. So it is it really keeps things lively. 
as far as athletics, yes, we have our division one, right? The best of the best athletics. And then we have our club teams right below that and then intramurals. So if you love athletics, but you, you're probably not gonna go pro and you're not gonna play uh, baseball pro, um, you can join the club team, right? And still try out for the team, get on and you'll compete against other US university club teams. So you'll still get to go to practice every week. You'll still get to travel to other states, to other universities and compete very competitively, like a division one level, just you won't be on TV while you do it. <laughs> and then intramurals are just more fun. Intramurals are the, the very fun. There's no practice. You show up, you have a good time, you meet a lot of people and it's not as competitive or intense, right? So we do have a lot of great athletic facilities on campus. They're all number one, they're amazing. So basketball arena, football arena, soccer, what else? Baseball, tennis, swimming, really nice facilities. And if you want, you know, um, we'll, we're happy to touch chat with you all, of course, uh, but don't hesitate to go to our website and to search. You can put it, if you're interested in swimming, search and you'll find our Olympic size swimming pool. If you're interested in something else, like student or organization, you can find it and quickly learn a lot more information as well. These have been great questions. Mm. All right, well, I'll wait just 10 more seconds for another question and then we'll wrap it up. Oh, oh yeah. No, Valerie, um, it won't negatively impact your transcript. So Valerie asked, um, you know, she said, we do not have sports or any activities at my high school. So does this impact affect my application? Uh, it will not. So as international office, we are aware that not all schools have activities for students to get involved in. So when we're reviewing an application and we see it's from a certain country and a certain school, we are aware, right, that not everyone has every athletic opportunity at their school or every student organization available. So we aren't going to negatively review the student simply because they didn't have anything listed. Um, I do encourage you if you're involved in anything, right, outside of school to please include that. So if you work, right, if you work part-time or you are in charge of, you know, overseeing your family or cooking six days a week for your siblings um, or anything else, please include that because we know that students often are busy and have many responsibilities and those might be not at school. Those might not be at an athletic game. It might be something different. So please um, include that in your activities list. You're welcome. Okay, well, we'll wrap it up here. Really appreciate you coming today. Uh, thanks so much. And I hope you found this informative. I know that we appreciate you taking the time to meet with us and learn more about the University of Cincinnati. So I'll continue to send out emails to you uh, with information about UC and we'll do our best to connect. Um, I encourage you to reach out to the international office at our email, I'll type that out, or our amazing student ambassadors like Jess to learn more about the university. Um, Jess, I'll hand it over to you. Sure, just please connect with us on our socials. Um, I think it's a, for me, when I was applying, I found social media to be a great way to uh, just really understand how the campus works and see the day-to-day -day life of students. I found that really important in choosing my college and finding where I was where I was gonna be. So please connect with us. We, we love chatting to you students. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for coming along today and listening to us and learning about UC.